Uh, very much like Food Inc., but slightly different focus. Um, it is probably a little bit less balanced than Food Inc. If you thought Food Inc. was um, a little bit biased, uh, A, I don't disagree, and B, I'm aware that tonight's movie is probably even more biased. Just so you know, I don't want to lie about that. Like I, I recognize that. It's not bad, it's just bias. Uh, any questions about the night's movie at 6 p.m.? I'm sure you've all warmed up. The uh, next announcement is that I'm doing another Unit 2 exam review tomorrow at lunch. So if you couldn't make it yesterday, but you'd like to see the paper, you should. Just so you know, on Wednesday, I had about 15 or 20 kids, and they appealed like five or six papers. A couple of math errors, a couple of um, uh, appeals in the grading. So a couple of kids found a missing check mark and got a free point, and a couple of kids argued their case and may or may not have gotten a free point. I haven't checked that status yet. Point being, you should try to come tomorrow at lunch. There might be a way to fix up your grade. Um, I thought Wednesday would be the last one, and then my Thursday lunch canceled and my Friday lunch canceled. So I'm available Friday at lunch. Now, I'd like to give you maybe two or three minutes for you to find your group of three and talk to them. Uh, here's what I need you to talk about. First of all, is someone going to be absent tomorrow? Uh, I'm still talking. Hold on. Uh, in your group of three, figure out if someone's going to be absent tomorrow. And if you know someone's going to be absent, you probably want to make sure that they've kind of made a commitment to trade. Like, okay, fine, we'll set up the experiment by ourselves, but you're going to have to do the post-lab questions or something. Make sure that you find a way to plan for and incorporate your absent students. How many of you think you already have a group of three because you had a group of three before that worked fine? And how many of you think you're going to have to shuffle new groups of three today? And how many of you are lost in the woods and you're afraid because there's wolves after you and you don't like this group making thing and you need help finding a group of three? Hey, can, can, does that make three in the back there? I'm also pointing at Morgan. Is that okay? Is everybody happy with that? Okay. Because when I asked, there was like three hands, so that was easy. Uh, anybody else have a problem finding groups? That was cool. So take two minutes, figure out what your target percentages are going to be, and tell me which questions you have, and then I'll show you a trick to do the math that's going to help you a lot.
Who doesn't have a group? Who does not have a group? You don't have a complete group? Does anybody else not have a Two as well. Just two people. So how many groups of three are there? Raise your hand if you're in a group of three already. Raise your hand if you are not currently in a group of three. Is anybody absent today? You may have one group of four. Is that a problem? No. Good. question and I can help you and um, I, I want to fight for you to please ask questions. A lot of kids just sort of decide not to ask, like they quit, they go, oh I don't get screwed. Please don't do that. A, I'm a helpful person that's kind hearted, but B, I really believe in people being self actualized and like owning their lives. And so I am here to help you, but you have to ask for help, like with addiction, you know? So this is your, like, salinization lab intervention right now. You need to ask for help because we're all here together because we love you. So you're going to have to ask for help, and we will all help you. Little salinization lab intervention. Before you even ask, I'll bet you I have an idea. But go ahead. Um, the salinization. I know that you're The it calculating up. salinities part? And you have a question which is? I was hoping you'll define what the C and S Variables? Yes, I will. Who else? Watch this. As a principle, do we all understand that if you mix fresh water with salt water, you get less salty water? Yes. If they were in equal volumes, this was 10% and this was 0%, and we put equal volumes, what would be our target solution after mixing equal volumes of 0 and 10? 5%. Because it would be, you know, like splitting the difference, right? Do we all agree with that? So far? Yeah. Like a digitized black and a digitized white, if you 50 50, you get a perfectly halfway gray, right? Yes. Now, that formula, C1, V1 equals C2, V2, can be rewritten like this, starting with this stuff, plus some amount of fresh water, we will get this stuff. There are two steps. This whole step will tell us how much salt water, and then we'll have to do an extra step for how much fresh water? Everybody okay with me so far? Mm -hmm. Because you know you have to mix some salt water and some fresh water to get your mix, right? You understand this principle, right? Mm -hmm. 
Now, you should know that your starting concentration is always 5%, because I'm going to give you a big-ass bottle of 5% salt water. So that's a constant, because that's what I'm giving you. I haven't done math. I've told you a fact. The 5%, that's what I mix. I, I take 95% water and 5% salt, and I shake it, and that's your 5%. Everybody got that? Yes. So that's a constant. In all your equations, it'll just be a 5. And there's another constant. For the sake of uh, consistency and for simplicity, and because that's the size of my glassware, your ending volume will always be 10 milliliters. You're going to make 10 mil of whatever concentration you decide. If you want to make 3%, that's the concentration. You're going to make 10 milliliters of it. That's a constant that I'm telling you makes the math really easy, so let's just go with it. Everybody happy with that? Do we agree that there's concentration and there's volume? Like how many $1 bills? There are 100 cents concentrated in a $1 bill. You could have 21 dollar bills or you could have one 20 dollar bill. There's volume, like 21s or one one, right? And there's concentration, like the 1 dollar bill or the 20 dollar bill. Okay with that? Volume and concentration? We good? Now watch. Because that one's always 5 and that one's always 10, we can do a pretty neat trick. The starting volume is how much salt water? Do we agree it's this, this number starting, like how much? And then there's the what you're going to end up with concentration. You're going to pick that. That's your target salinity. If you tell me you want to make 2%, I'll give you the recipe. And if you tell me that you want to make 3%, I can give you that recipe. Are we OK? You're going to pick the concentration because you're designing your experiment because you're going to make six different petri dishes. So far, so good? Is that a question I can answer or do you guys have to talk about different things? I can help you if you want. Um, we were just kind of, we were originally thinking like to make the math and things start at like 50%, but that would be way off scale, right? Way off scale because remember that ocean is 3.5 and that's already All too right, salty. Okay, so we'll start at 5 and go down. You already know that 3.5 is too salty. So you probably want to do something in between 0 and 3.5, like 0 0.51, 1.52, 2.5, something like that. Anybody else? Did, did we have a successful communication there? Your question? Is the control worked into the six other ones? Like is it 5 and then a controller? Is Correct. It yes, it is. The control will have to be one of your six. Control meaning you no know salt one. That seems to me like the most reasonable control. I'm open to other suggestions. Yes? Um, so basically, you just sim simplified the math and you, you get the like, uh, initial volume equals two times the concentration. And you don't yes. Have to keep, you don't have to keep doing the math, you just use that equation. Basically, yes. Because look, Alessio just asked me something that is easy for those of you that speak mathematics, but some of you are enumerate, and so I want to help. Have you guys heard that term before? I've heard illiterate. Yeah, so you can be illiterate or you can be enumerate. People that are bad at literacy, people that are bad at numbers. Okay. Or numeracy and literacy. You're good at them too. Alright. So you're trying to tell me, you're trying to figure out how much of the salt water, we're still in that part, and then you're going to give me a concentration. Now, because you have the 5 and the 10 always fixed, watch this. I can move the 5 over to this side, and the 10 and the 5 cancel out. And your starting volume will always be double your target concentration. That's why I picked these numbers, because they cancel out very nicely. So somebody give me a uh, target concentration, please. In my lab, we decided we're going to make a solution that is 2%. 2%? If you're going to go for 2%, you'll need 4 mil of salt water, and if you know you're trying to end up you need six millimeters of fresh water. That's right. Alessio says you need six millimeters of fresh water. Remember we had to figure out how much salt, we had to figure out how much fresh. We figured out how much salt right there because I doubled his target concentration and that's the milliliters of salt water. Do we agree with that step? 
because he gave me the concentration. That was his choice. And so I did the math, and I told him how much salt water to start with, and that's what that step was. We figured out salt water. We're done. That's the check mark. We got salt water. Now, if there's four milliliters of salt water, and we're trying to end up with 10 milliliters of 2%. Hello. Hold on. So these are all the tests. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, bro, I can do that. How do you know this one? Take it? I haven't checked. You have? I don't believe you. No, I haven't checked. You want to check? No. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're all in sequence, so. You really have to check? No. Like the letter came to your house and nobody opened it? Oh, no, I didn't get one. Okay. Did you get letters? Did you get a letter? For what? No, what? You have to go on the internet? Mm. You can find out right now. Man. I have to have, like, the same that they For give what? you. Can I just find out why you're standing here and not tell you? Uh, Will you be able to see it in my eyes? The disappointment? <laughs> Is it, do you want to run right now? I kind of want to know. Okay, you should run. I should run? No, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> but if you're going to be nervous about it, you should run. Because I have to look. Okay. So, yeah. So it's just about mess them up. <laughs> okay, I won't mess them up. Thank you. Okay. If you ever know what you got, I have the number right here. Bye bye. Yeah, no. What? For the AP test last year. Maybe in science. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Who asked that question? Okay. We have other stuff to do today, and we're almost out of time. I, I appreciate your participation, but I gotta get going. Oh. Right when I get the ball, it's like, oh, it's not guys with nice haircut. <laughs> okay, we'll <bye. laughs> Okay. If we said this much salt water, and you're trying to end up with 10 milliliters, 4 plus what equals 10? Okay. And then we figured out the recipe to make 10 milliliters of 2%. Now that we know how much salt water and how much fresh water Alessio could come in, grab a big beaker of fresh, a big beaker of salt, measure the two the four and pour that in, measure the six and pour that in, swirl, and he can water his seeds with 2% salt water. Let's do this again. Let's do this again. How much of this do we need to put on our free line? Shut up. Uh, all the math. Okay. So I don't care if you show your calculations, but you might want to keep them so you can double check if like David has a different number. Like, oh, really? yeah, I'm just kind of we should do that that long one first, and then using that like function. Yeah, and even just starting from this, you can figure out. Okay. All right, somebody else give me a concentration, quick, quick. Three. three. What's this? If you're trying to make three percent, three times two equals six mil of salt water, right? And then 6 mil salt water plus how much fresh water four. equals 10 mil of 3%? 4. Okay. Did you follow that? Yeah. Who else? 1.5. 3 mil salt water plus how many? 7. <laughs> right? Because 3 plus 7 equals 10 of the 1.5. Let's go again! Give me a, give me a card resolution. 2.5. 5 and 5. Give me another one. 2.5. That was his. What? 2.5 is 5 and 5. What else? 3%, you would need 6 mil of salt water and 4 mil of fresh water. I just did that in my head because I doubled it and then I said, you can do that in your head too. Who else? You want to make what? 1.75, you would need 3.5 of salt water and 6.5 of fresh I did that in my head. I'm so impressive. Who else? Yeah, you can keep showing off. There is no way you can stop me. Come on. So you would need 2.24 of salt water and 7.76 of fresh water. Who else? Come on. What? Yeah, exactly. So you would need two thirds and a third. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Look, 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 I'm done. We're done. We're done. I'm done showing off. But listen, you double your target concentration, and that's the volume of salt water. You subtract that volume out of 10, and that's how much fresh water. So we just have to find like six um, different. One of the things so one, one of them. Yeah, one of them zero. That's right. So like this is not that big of a deal. Just make sure you have the math ready when you walk in tomorrow, because I don't want everybody to have this exact same conversation tomorrow. Now listen, a couple of you probably gave up and you're hoping that somebody else in your group is just going to handle this. And that person is going to have like horrifying diarrhea tomorrow, or get hit by a car, or get dumped by their parents, or something. <laughs> Like as soon as you decide that you're not in charge of your education, you hand it to someone else and then they're going to wreck it for you. Can I help someone instead of you handing it over to someone who's going to pee all over your education? Yes? Um, can you talk a little bit more about the free lab and like exactly what you should do for it? You should know what you're doing and write down notes on paper. Because when you walk in, I'm going to give you those materials and then I'm going to ignore you. Okay. No. Yep. Yep. What else? Ask me, ask me, ask me. Isn't that a Smith song? No, tell me, tell me, tell me. Ask me, ask me, ask me. Is that the cure? Not Smith? Wait, wait, I actually have a question. The 5%. Wait, what's the 5% again? I'm really, I'm really tired, sorry. The 5% label. That's your starting concentration because that's the water that I make. All right. Does anybody have any idea where we left off yesterday? What? We just finished disease transmission. Just finished disease transmission. Anybody else know where we left off? Because the problem with this video that I'm this, uh, I was able to solve the DVD shutting off problem, but now we're watching on my laptop where I can't scan back and forth. So I really have to have like a pretty good idea of where we left off. Look, it's broken up into roughly five minute chapters. That's our homework, anyway. Yeah, that will stand during the video. But so she. Escape. They have. Okay, now I really am going to need quiet. Is there anything urgent that we really have to figure out? Okay, so you'll need to get your 4.2 scab, leave it out. You'll need your good and bad list so you can make sense of the terminology. And you'll need your study goals so that you can go continue with your assignment. I'm trying to figure out where they were talking about disease. Um, go back. Norway? Did uh, you guys go to Norway? And they so had Norway. Yeah. Oh. We came back to British Columbia. Okay, the container? Back to the Yellow Sea. They have fewer contaminants. And it should not be the They say that it's not going to harm anything. Did you guys see the escapement of salmon? Yeah. They talked about that? But what about this? Do you guys see this guy? Uh, no. No, we haven't seen you this. haven't been to Scotland? Yeah. No. Escaped Atlantic salmon. Oh, you you have seen the escapement? Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm fast forwarding as quickly as I can. Please tell me when I've gotten close. Norway? You went to Norway? Yeah. You heard that in Norway they had to dust all their fishies? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got this part. You guys see this guy? Yeah. Did you guys see the yellow foamy fish on top? Yeah. 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 You saw that? I think we're around here, maybe? Yeah. I don't remember this. 
Another problem that salmon farmers have tried to manage are infestations of sea lice. Local biologists and fishermen say that wild salmon are being infested by lice as they migrate near salmon farms, a problem which can be especially lethal to juvenile fish. Our young fish going out to sea have to pass through this. It kills. And that's the bottom line. And it's happening out there, the floating hotels out there, where there's stress, where there's overcrowding, and when they become overcrowded and stressed, then you have a problem. Depending on who you talk to, the entire coast of British Columbia is a migratory route of wild salmon. That's probably true. So we have a responsibility both to ourselves and our fish, as well as the wild fish, to keep uh, our sea lice levels on our fish down. And that's what we have been doing. They say that it's not going to harm anything. But what about things? Well, we I hear of uh, things that are happening in Scotland, things that are happening in other places that farm fish has been. And I don't think I'm talking out of my head. I believe that uh, what I'm talking about has already happened. Before the lice problem arose in British Columbian waters, there was ample evidence in Scotland that wild fish were being severely impacted by sea lice near farms operated by the same corporations that farm salmon in Canada. What we see here is a very close correlation on numbers of lice on the fish according to what the production cycle is in the local salmon farm. If the local farm has been fallowed, as it does every second year, then you get very low levels of lice. When the farm has been running for a couple of years, the numbers of parasites on the farm are built up. Consequently, you end up with very high numbers of lice on the salmon and trout. And when I say high, I mean fatally high. A few of the farms in British Columbia have taken a different approach to growing salmon, practices which they say result in healthier fish. One of these farms is raising salmon in tanks on dry land rather than in floating net cages. We need to protect our fish from anything that comes in and as well we need to protect the marine environment from, from whatever we generate within our system. So we see land-based farming as one very good route to go towards sustainability. There are also a few net cage farms that operate in different ways. Disease as an outbreak has not been a problem at all. We have not had a out major infectious outbreak at Yellow Island. It's relying on a robust animal that has been developed through the years and also the uh, inherent uh, conditions here of the site. One of the conditions involves less crowded densities of fish. It's about half to one-fifth of what would normally be acceptable as stocking nesting in a more intensive culture. We do feed manually on the farm. We do not use automated feeders. It's a little labor intensive, but in the end it's worth it because you, you're that much closer to the animal. Regardless of how they're fed, the feed pellets given to salmon contain fish meal and fish oil, a dietary requirement for all carnivorous fish species. Although exact conversion rates are a subject of debate, most scientists agree that for every pound of salmon farm raised, at least three pounds of wild fish must be caught in the ocean as feed. A con why, why is it better to eat lower on the food web? Because it requires less energy. energy. It's just plain old more energy there, right? There's more food. If you ate the, the corn, you could feed ten times as many people as you fed the corn and cows and then you take meat. So just, you 
you can't get the same amount of energy out of the cow because the cow spent a lot of that corn energy. Likewise, you can get a lot more energy out of that bait ball than you could taking that bait ball and feeding it to salmon and then eating your salmon because the salmon are wasting most of those sardine calories. So the funny thing is when we fish farm big fish, we're actually cutting down the energy volume of the ocean very significantly. That's right, unless we take their food away. And so when you're putting them in the tank, it's not like you're making free fish. And in many ways, you know, you're, you're taking the food out of the wild salmon to make your farm salmon. Um, and then you have to wonder, like, what are the efficiencies here? Is it equally, is it a good trade? Or would we have gotten more wild salmon by letting them eat the sardines? Version many consider to be a wasteful use of fishery resources. Don't forget also that sardines are cheap because nobody wants to eat that crap. But salmon is pretty valuable. And so everybody's like, well, I'm going to start a salmon farm and all we need is sardines and that's cheap. So we're taking like a giant energy volume out of the ocean to make an alternative to seafood, but we're also preventing seafood. So people are like, oh, we can't eat salmon? Don't worry, we'll just grow salmon. That's actually a, another layer to the problem. Like we couldn't eat salmon because they're running out, and now we're going to take away all the seafood for the remaining salmon. And you know what I mean? Growing ever more scarce. The world production of fish oil is something like between one and one and a half million tons per year, and that could be finished before 2015. Fish meal could run out uh, sometime before 2030. That is, all of the present fish meal production could at that time possibly be used for aquafeeds. There were also food safety issues involved with the fish being caught to create fish meal and oil. The contaminant level of the fish meal will reflect the contaminant load in the environment from which they came. Our challenge is to find areas where the contaminant level is low and ensure that we source fish meal and fish oil from those sources, not from polluted sources. An exhaustive study completed by a team of toxicologists has shown that samples of farmed salmon from supermarkets across the U.S have 10 times more residues of PCBs and dioxins than wild salmon. Dioxin is rated by every national and international agency as a proven human carcinogen. PCBs are rated as probable human carcinogens. I think the most dangerous thing is that exposure to these compounds before birth causes a reduction in IQ of the child. One reason why wild salmon have fewer toxins than the farmed fish is because of their natural diet. The fish that they eat are lower on the food chain. They have fewer contaminants, and they eat crustaceans. And in fact, the crustaceans, the shrimp, is where the wild salmon get their, their natural pink or red color. And this is unlike the situation with the farmed salmon, where the color is an added dye. Today may soon arrive when some farm salmon products will carry additional information, labeling them as genetically modified. The smaller fish in this tank is a wild salmon at normal size for one year of age. The larger fish are the same age, but have been genetically modified to grow to harvest size in just half the time. There are some tremendous advantages to having a faster growing fish if you're in the farming business. It's going to be much more inexpensive to produce the fish and there's a higher profit margin. Although not yet on the market, these altered salmon have been developed amidst uncertainties about the health effects of eating them and about what might happen if they ever escape into the wild. Because they are known to be less fit for survival, any possibility of interbreeding with wild salmon could be disastrous for the species. Let's protect the things that have evolved over 10,000 years. Just because a person has an idea and has got the venture capital to set up a company 
and begin to try to create a product doesn't mean that they ultimately have the absolute right to market that product, to grow that product, assuming what they consider a small risk. But that being the case, what the hell is the rush? A very different type of aquaculture is feeding millions of people in China. Our marine resources are very limited now because of overfishing, and we have a huge population. It is by developing aquaculture that we can provide enough animal protein for our people. China is the birthplace of aquaculture, a well-integrated system that fits many of the principles of ecology. Modern-day aquaculture in developed countries could learn a lot from the thousands of years of experience with aquaculture that comes from China. The fact that this very productive approach to fish farming has endured for so many centuries may be the ultimate measure for what can be defined as sustainable. And what they have evolved over time is a carp polyculture, where they have four types of carp in the same pond. And one species is, uh, feeds on phytoplankton, another one feeds on zooplankton, then there's a grass carp that feeds on vegetation that grows around the pond, and then there's a common carp, which is a bottom feeder, and feeds on all the detritus from the other species of fish. So, in terms of efficiency, this, this model's in a class by itself. Freshwater aquaculture in China is traditionally a part of their agriculture. Byproducts from various crops feed the fish, and waste products from the ponds fertilize the fields. Another form of fish farming that's quite common in China is the production of shellfish, oysters and clams. They're grown in coastal regions in, in salt water, and they filter the water and obtain their nutrients from that. And these are, in environmental terms, the least intrusive of any of the farmed fish. In coastal waters of the Yellow Sea, Vast shellfish beds are seeded with post-larval clams and oysters that are produced in hatcheries. The harvests are bountiful and increasing dramatically each year. Markets in China are filled with an abundance of farmed shellfish and carp, helping to meet the growing demand for fish protein. But a rise in personal income in some parts of the country has also meant increased demand for carnivorous species like shrimp, and there are concerns about the expansion of this type of aquaculture. Agriculture will continue to grow here in the future and become more profitable, but we also need to focus on how we operate. We don't want to destroy our natural resources or the environment. With nearly a quarter of the world's human